Alright, so here I am back again with part 8 of the series and in this video it's going to be a really short video I'm just going to explain the, the, the hair shader setup so it's a really simple um, straightforward process and we won't be doing too many crazy things in the shader before we get started I just want to make sure that if you're following this tutorial you should add uh, you should uh, install the the node uh, wrangler add-on so if you go to file preferences user preferences and go to add-ons and just search for node wrangler node right right there it is and just make sure it's enabled it should show a little tick mark next to uh, next to the name there and just uh, once you've enabled it just click save user settings so this will uh, enable the add-on and this is probably one of the most useful add-ons you can install if you're working with uh, shading and so on in cycles so just to demonstrate really quickly what this add-on does if you go into the node edit editing um, uh, view then this uh, add-on basically speeds up a bunch of things that that you can do in here so if for example you select a node that can accept a texture input all you do on the keyboard is hit ctrl t and it adds in a little texture texturing setup that's all ready for you to add in some textures to this node and uh, that's basically what node, node wrangler does it does all kinds of little things to sort of speed up uh, your workflow in the in the node um, view so for example you could also um, preview different nodes uh, so if so if I've got a, a giant node set up here uh, with many many nodes and I want to know what a specific node actually does then I can just hold control shift on the keyboard and click on that node and I get a like a visual representation here in the viewport that um, that shows me what exactly the node does so if I click again it shows me a different uh, each one of these uh, outputs here so that's also node wrangler um, takes care of that for you and it's incredibly useful and uh, yeah i just i just have no idea how i'd ever uh, do anything without this add-on so it does a bunch of other things as well and you could you could just google for all the all the functions that it does um, it adds quite a bit of functionality like for example the layout nodes here and so on and so forth but uh, yes definitely install this add-on if you're into shading and you want to speed up your workflow all right so here's my file from the previous tutorial i've got my hair all set up so i've selected the sculpt mesh and just added a new material called it hair so i've got my new um, node set up here in the in the right hand panel um, so that's what it looks like in the rendered view and the first thing i'm doing here is just starting to color this diffuse sort of a reddish brown color color um, just to start like with the basic hair color okay next up i'm adding a a add shader and then i'm plugging in a hair bsdf node into that and notice the bsdf the hair bsdf node is set to reflection and i've set the reflection color to a mid gray color and here i'm just tweaking the roughness a little bit so the default roughness is pretty good but you can always play around with it and uh, you can also tweak the all the different settings in there uh, it really depends on your lighting setup this lighting setup is a very basic three-point lighting setup so here I'm adding in another shader it's a mix shader and I'm going to use this mix shader to sort of uh, add in a, a light scattering effect into the hair so I'm going to do that by adding another hair BSDF node and setting it to transmission. And this will be set, this should be set to a color that sort of complements the main hair color. So if you've got your hair set to red uh, or brown, then you can choose a sort of a reddish brown, but sort of brighter than the, than the base color. And that should work pretty well. You can also uh, mix, uh, tweak the mix shader to sort of determine how how much of the scattering effect you want in there but i'm actually going to um, change it up a little bit later so, um, and i'm going to use a gradient to sort of uh, have the, the 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 light scatter in the hair uh, more towards the tips uh, and less towards the roots so uh, yes again just setting the roughness here and you can always just play around i don't recommend setting it to zero roughness i think that'll sort of break the shader a little bit but um, feel free to experiment. 
and so here I'm going to add in a, a hair info node so you can press shift a to add in new shade shaders and nodes um, so up to input and hair info and hair info node is going to be used to sort of generate generate a gradient for me to play around with so I've added in a color ramp node here and I've plugged in the, the intercept into the gradient here and then I'm plugging the gradient into the mix node and and this will sort of let me have a gradient um, light scattering effect so generally you want less light scattering effect towards the the roots of the hairs and more towards the tip so that's basically just what this uh, shader does it acts as a mask to uh, to tell the, the shader not to to scatter towards the roots of each hair so just uh, tweaking the the brightness of the reflection there and uh, as it is now this the shader is already fairly functional it it can actually be rendered like this and won't look too bad but I'm going to add a couple more features so the first feature here uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a noise texture and I'm going to duplicate my original diffuse BSDF and I'm also duplicating the mix shader so these this this new mix shader is going to be used to generate a bit of uh, variation in the shading so i i've set the bottom diffuse shader to a, br a bright green there and the reason for that is so that i can actually see the the, the areas that the that the noise texture are of is affecting notice i've plugged the noise texture into the the mix node so it's it's usually a good idea to set your your um, diffuse shaders to a sort of a high contrast colors just to preview um, what exactly the mask is doing so here I'm, I, I've, I've plugged the color ramp into the noise texture just lets me tweak the contrast a little bit what I want is a very even sort of uh, distribution of the two different colors across the entire uh, hair system And once I'm happy with that, I, I'll set the, the bottom color back to a realistic color. So ideally, you'd want sort of a, a lighter color and a darker color, but they still have to complement each other. So you can't have, unless you, of course, you're going for a very crazy look, which I'm not. And yeah, that's that's looking fairly good. The the, the As you can see, the, the variation in the hair adds a little bit more believability to it. So now it's time to do a preview render. And as you can see here, it's looking fairly good. And for such a simple shader, very, very short and sweet, it's really, it's, um, it does its job very well. And this sort of shader is the, the kind I like. It's simple, it's straight to the point, and it does its job very well. And it's very easy, you know, to, um, to kind of extend this shader. So you can add in some more color ramps, for example, to tweak the actual colors of each strand um, and so on. You can do all kinds of things, but this is like the basic hair shader and you can sort of play around with this and do whatever you want. So uh, I hope you found this informative and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.